Starting at number 10, Jesus is seen as the messenger of God. When it comes to the Christian view, in the book of John chapter 12 verses 49 to 50, it says, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as my Father has told me, so I speak. So we can see the parallel with Jesus being a messenger. And also in Islam, there's a passage in the Quran, Surah 4, verses 171, that says, Indeed, the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was a messenger of Allah. So it uses the term messenger specifically in that surah. There's also a similar belief that Jesus was born of a virgin. Now, when it comes to the Islamic perspective, the Quran says this. She, Mary, said, O Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, so it will be for God creates what he wills. When he has declared something, he says to it only be and it is. And that's taken from Surah 3 verses 47. Now when it comes to the Christian perspective, the book of Luke chapter 1 verses 34 and 35 says the following, How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So both passages point to Mary being a virgin in the Islamic passage that I quoted no man touching me is just you know a way of saying that no intimate relations had happened there's also a similarity with the working of miracles the Bible has many examples of miracles that are attributed to Jesus not just a few but there are quite a bit as he traveled from different city to city now one of these passages is from Matthew 11 verses 20 that says then he proceeded to denounce the town where most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. So as you can see, there's multiple miracles that he did in just one specific city. This is not counting the other miracles that he did. And in the book of John chapter 21 verses 25, it also sort of alludes to this by saying, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So all kind of miracles and everything were being being done by Jesus according to Christianity. Now in Islam it says, and make him a messenger to the children of Israel who will say, Indeed, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord in that I designed for you from clay that which is like the form of a bird. Then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by permission of Allah. And I cure the blind and the leper and I give life to the dead by permission of Allah. And I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses. Indeed, in that it is a sign for you if you are believers. And that's in Surah 5 verses 110. We see multiple examples of Jesus describing the miracles that he has been given the power to perform. Being raised to heaven comes in at number 7. In Islam, there's a passage in Surah 4 verses 158 that says this, Rather, Allah raised him to himself, and ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Over in the Bible, the book of Mark chapter 16 verses 9 also says this, So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. So both passages from the Quran and the Bible do show that Jesus was taken up to God. Now I want to talk about the return of Jesus at number 6. Yeah, both Christians and and Muslims believe that Jesus will one day return from heaven. But the difference though is when it's gonna happen and how exactly it's gonna happen. According to Islam, Jesus is gonna return during the wars that are fought between the Mahdi, and the Mahdi will be warring with Dajjal or the false messiah. Now the false messiah, by the way, is similar to the terminology of antichrist that's mentioned in the Bible. So Jesus will join the Mahdi in the war against Dajjal and ultimately defeat Dajjal. And of course, the return of Jesus is one of the central focuses of Christianity where Jesus is going to return to judge the world as well as rescue those who are holy 
and also will work to restore the earth. There's another similarity at number five in having disciples. In the Quran, it does mention this specifically. It says in Surah 61 verses 14, O you who have believed, be supporters of Allah as when Jesus, the son of Mary, said to the disciples, who are my supporters for Allah? The disciples said, we are supporters of Allah. And a faction of the children of Israel believed and a faction disbelieved. So we supported those who believed against their enemy and they became dominant. From the Christian perspective, of course, this is a very popular teaching of Jesus that he had multiple disciples, probably numbering in the hundreds, but he appointed 12 apostles. But either way, in John chapter 18, verses 1, it says, when he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden and he and his disciples went into it. Again, there's multiple passages in the Bible that talk about Jesus and his disciples. So this is nothing new, but I just thought it was a pretty cool similarity that both Muslims and Christians share. Also, Oh, number four, did you know that Jesus is compared to Adam? Over in the Quran, Surah 3 verses 59, it has a passage that says this, Indeed, the example of Jesus to Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust. Then he said to him, Be, and he was. Now, in Christianity, there's a passage that refers to Jesus, specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 41, and it says, So it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, a life-giving spirit. So both religions do acknowledge the similarity with Adam because Jesus wasn't born through procreation in both Christianity and Islam, but was born specifically just by the power of God. Another similarity that many people don't know is that he's also called the Word of God in both religions. When it comes to Islam, there's a passage that says the Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary, and a soul created at the command from him. And that's taken from Surah 4, verses 171 of the Quran. So in this passage, Jesus is called Messiah. He's called Son of Mary. He's called the Messenger of Allah. He's called His Word, as well as He's called a soul created from Him. Some translations, by the way, use the term spirit instead of soul. But in Christianity, in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 12 to 13, it says, His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. Also, another very popular quoted passage in the Bible is taken from John chapter 1, verses 1, that says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The mention of the Gospel as well as Jesus sharing it is also a similarity in Islam and Christianity. In the Quran, Surah 5 verses 46, this is what it says, And we sent following in their footsteps Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah. And we gave him the Gospel in which was guidance and light and confirming that which preceded it of the Torah as guidance and instruction for the righteous. Then in Christianity, we can find mention of the gospel being shared by Jesus in the book of Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 15 that says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The similarity that we're going to be ending off with is being sinless. In Christianity, according to the Bible, Jesus is the only person who has ever lived without sinning once. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, it says, You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. The mention of this in Islam is found in Surah 19, verses 19, that says, I am only a messenger of your Lord to announce to you a faultless son. And the words, by the way, used in Arabic to describe him are Gulaman Zakian, and that means most holy boy. And the word Zakia, by the way, means blameless. And it appears in the Quran only twice. So faultless son or blameless boy, whatever translation you want to use, it refers to him not having any sin. So let's jump right into this list. At number 10, we have what Jesus said about himself. So oftentimes you would hear this question pop up about Jesus. Well, did Jesus say that he was God? 
And the belief in Christianity about this is that, well, he in fact said that. Jesus is quoted by Christians to say things like, before Abraham was, I am, and also I and the Father are one. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Things like that. So these are all statements that you find in the Gospel of John. Now, Muslims believe that these statements do not actually clearly have Jesus saying that he is God and Muslims believe that Christians read into these statements to make them say something that they completely don't say at all. The different belief at number nine is Jesus returning. According to the religion of Islam, in the end times, Jesus will return and announce that Islam is the true religion and anyone who is not Muslim will convert at that time. All other religions will no longer exist and Jesus will rule the world and this reign of Jesus is going to last 40 years. He'll also join forces with the Mahdi which is the Redeemer in Islam and the Mahdi and Jesus will fight against the Antichrist or the Dajjal. Now in Christian theology, they believe that when Jesus returns, every eye will see him. He'll be coming with the angels of heaven and anyone that has passed away and deemed righteous will resurrect at that moment. And everyone who is alive and deemed holy will join those who have resurrected and meet Jesus in the air and off they go to heaven. Maybe Jesus spoke? Well, in the Quran, it has a reference to this. This passage goes like this and I quote, then she, Mary, pointed to him they said, how can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? He, Jesus said, verily I am a slave of God. He has given me the scriptures and made me a prophet. And that's found in the Quran, Surah 19 verses 29 to 30. But when we look at the religion of Christianity, there's no such story as baby Jesus talking. But it's not straight out denied that it possibly could have happened by Christians. In the Bible though, the first time Jesus is recorded to have spoken was when he's 12 years old. Now, speaking in the cradle, Muslims view this as a miracle and that it was a sign that Jesus is a special prophet of God but it's not listed in one of the miracles that Jesus did according to Christianity. Moving on to the difference at number seven, the amount of times mentioned. So check this, Jesus also referred to as Isa in Arabic is one of the most mentioned people in the entire Quran. He is mentioned 25 times by name Isa and he's mentioned in third person 48 times and in first person 35 times. Other mentions are titles that are attributed to him, for example, like the Word of God or the Son of Mary, things like that. Now, when we look over into Christianity, uh, let's look at the King James Version of the Bible. The name Jesus appears 973 times. However, that does not include other places where he is mentioned, but not directly by name. And depending on the translation of the Bible that you use, the word Jesus itself appears anywhere between 900 to 1300 times in the New Testament. Number six has us look at the difference in the sin nature when it comes to Jesus. So Muslims do not believe in the concept of original sin. Original sin, by the way, is a Christian belief where it's believed that the nature to sin stems from Adam and Eve who had disobeyed God in the beginning. So now everyone born has a default nature to disobey God. But Muslims, like I mentioned, do not share this view. So they don't see the need for a savior in the same way that Christians see the need for a savior. Christianity teaches that Jesus came in the form of a human so that he could allow all humans to take on his divine nature, which is the only hope of being saved. Now in reference to this, the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 4 says this and I quote, And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Now for Muslims, they believe that as long as anyone accepts God and professes that Muhammad is his messenger and strives to submit their will to God, well, that's what you need for salvation. You're on the right path to God and there really is no need for someone to save you from the nature of sin. Halfway in at number five, let's look at the prophecy of Muhammad. 
This is a Muslim belief. Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet who was given a special message known as the Injil or the Gospel to convey to anybody he came in contact with. Now, this message both confirmed what was taught in the Torah and foretold the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, according to Muslims. Also in Christianity, you'll find the belief that Jesus was to share the gospel and this gospel message was intended to spread to the entire world. The difference though is that in Christianity, the one who Jesus foretells or prophesies is gonna be coming is the Holy Spirit who is also believed to be God. Muslims believe though that this Holy Spirit that Jesus was prophesying about is the Prophet Muhammad. Now the different beliefs at number four is the miracles confirm his divinity. However, while Muslims accept that Jesus was a servant, a teacher, and a lover of God's word, they do not actually believe that Jesus was divine. The Quran describes the miracles that Jesus performed, like healing sick people, even raising dead people. They ascribe those miracles to God's endless mercy and God granting Jesus the ability to do those things not proof that Jesus is divine in and of himself. Christianity ascribes his miracles to him being divine though, as well as an example of what people can accomplish if they have total faith in God. For example, one verse in the Bible in the book of John chapter 14 verse 12, it says, Truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. Number three has the crucifixion of Jesus. Muslims do not believe in Jesus' crucifixion. Islamic belief explains that Jesus was actually spared from death. When we look at the Quran, chapter 4, verses 157 to 159, we find this passage, and I quote, And for their saying, Indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who defer over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain. Now, the central theme of Christianity is that Jesus indeed died through crucifixion. In the four Gospels of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all detail Jesus dying on the cross. So that, of course, is a major difference in the beliefs when it comes to Islam and Christianity. Number two has Jesus being the Son of God. In Islam, you won't find Jesus ever being referred to as the Son of God because it's believed that God has no children. And a lot of differences relating to this is how the term Son of God is used. For example, in the Christian view, it's that Jesus is God's son in the spiritual sense, not the physical sense, that like God didn't give birth to Jesus, nor did God impregnate someone as humans do so that Jesus can be born. So it's not in the physical sense, but it's a term like a title that's given to Jesus according to Christianity. So in other words, to say that Jesus is a son of God, it means that Jesus is from God. That's a belief that Islam agrees with, Jesus being from God, but they don't view it as him being a son of God. And we end off this episode with a difference at number one, Jesus is God or not. This is probably the biggest point of debate between Christians and Muslims to date. It is whether or not Jesus is God or not. Muslims are clear in the belief that Jesus is not God himself because Jesus was a human, he was a prophet sent by God. Now, Christians, well, depending on the denomination of Christianity that you refer to, they believe that God took on various forms. For example, he's manifested in the form of a burning bush, he manifested in the form of angels throughout the Old Testament, and he also took on the form of a human, Jesus, in order to reveal himself to humans in a different way. That also ties into the belief of the Trinity, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who are all equally God, but separate in person. But either way, that's another topic for another video. Starting at number 10. In Islamic text, you won't find Jesus ever being referred to as the Son of God because it is believed that God has no children. And a lot of the differences related to this is how the term Son of God is actually used. So check this. The Christian view is that Jesus is only God's Son in the spiritual sense, not in a physical sense, and that the term Son of God is actually a title. One example of 
love this that I found is like if you call someone the son of the Nile, it means that that person is from Egypt. So to say that Jesus is the son of God means that Jesus is from God. Next up at number nine, one of the biggest points of debate between Muslims and Christians is whether Jesus is also God or not. Muslims are clear in the belief that Jesus is not God himself because Jesus was a human. Christians believe that God took on the form of a burning bush when revealing himself to Moses, so it's not impossible for God to take on the form of a human in order to reveal himself to humans, just in a different way though. Another difference is that in the Quran, it shares a story of how Jesus spoke in the cradle as a baby, and it goes, Then she, Mary, pointed to him, and they said, How can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? He, Jesus, said, Verily, I am a slave of God. God, he has given me the scriptures and made me a prophet. And that's found in the Quran, Surah 19, verses 29 to 30. Now, in Christianity, there's no such story as baby Jesus talking or anything like that. But it's not expressly denied. It could happen, like it's possible that it happened in the view of Christianity. In the Bible, though, the first time Jesus is recorded to have spoken is when he's 12 years old. Muslims view the miracle of Jesus speaking as a baby as a sign that he is a special prophet from God, but it is not listed as one of the miracles of Jesus in the religion of Christianity. Okay, so moving on to number seven, let's take a look at the times that Jesus is mentioned. So Jesus, called Isa in Arabic, is one of the most mentioned people in the entire Quran. He's mentioned 25 times by the name Isa, and he's also mentioned in the third person 48 times, and also in the first person 35 times. There's other mentions of Jesus, but titles and attributes like the Son of Mary or the Word of God are used. Now over in Christianity, in the King James Version of the Bible, the name Jesus appears 937 times. However, that doesn't include other places where he's mentioned, but not directly by name. So depending on the translation, the word Jesus appears between 900 to 1300 times, and references to Jesus, like using the term Christ or Lord, appear several hundred times, and also some of these words may be translated as Jesus. So it really just depends on the type of translation of the Bible that you use. Okay, so let's take a look at the differences with the crucifixion. Muslims do not believe that Jesus was crucified. Islamic tradition explains that Jesus was actually spared from being put to death. In the Quran, Surah 4, verse 157 to 159, it says, And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him. Nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who defer over it are in doubt. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain. So the central theme in Christianity, on the other hand, is that Jesus indeed did die through crucifixion. In the four Gospels of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all go into great detail about Jesus dying on a cross. Halfway in at number five, Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet who was given a special message, the Injil or the Gospel, to convey to all the people. And this message confirmed what was taught in the Torah and also foretold of the coming prophet Muhammad. Now in Christianity, Jesus also shares a gospel that is intended to be spread to the entire world. And the difference though is that in Christianity, the one who Jesus foretells is coming after him is the Holy Spirit, who is believed to also be God, not the prophet Muhammad. All right, let's talk about the miracles now. While Muslims accept that Jesus was a servant of God, as well as a teacher, they do not believe that he was actually divine. The Quran describes the miracles of Jesus, such as healing the sick and raising the dead, but it does not ascribe these miracles to him being divine. Instead, Jesus is said to be a sign to all mankind of God's endless mercy. Christianity, on the other hand, ascribes his miracles to him being divine, as well as an example of what people can accomplish if they have total faith in God. In the book of John 14 verses 12, it says, Very truly I say to you, whoever believes in me 
will do the works that I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And those are the words of Jesus according to the Bible. Now number three, Muslims do not believe in original sin. And if you don't know, original sin by the way is a Christian belief that is believed that the nature to sin actually stems from Adam and Eve disobeying God at the beginning. So now everyone born as a default has like this nature to disobey God. But Muslims don't actually share that view so they don't see the need for a savior in the same way that Christians do. Christianity teaches that Jesus came in the form of a human so that he could allow all humans to take on his divine nature, which is the only hope to be saved. The book of 2 Peter 1 verses 4 says, And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Now the Muslim view is that as long as any one accepts God and professes Muhammad as his messenger and strives to submit their will to God, that's all that's needed to be saved. Okay, so number two, we have the belief in the return of Jesus in these two religions. These are also completely different. According to the popular Islamic belief, in the end times, Jesus will return and proclaim Islam to be the true religion, and all Christians will just convert. All other religions will no longer exist and Jesus will be the sole ruler of the world and the reign of Jesus will last 40 years. He will also join forces with the Mahdi who is the redeemer in Islam to defeat the Dajjal or the Antichrist. And the most common Christian belief about this so is that when Jesus returns in the end times, everyone will see him. It's going to be loud. All the angels in heaven are going to come back with him and everyone that passed away that was deemed righteous will actually resurrect at that moment and everyone that's alive deemed righteous will join those who resurrected and be caught up in the sky and everybody goes to heaven. So yeah, two completely different views right there. And finally, number one, this probably you'll hear this question asked a lot in debates between Muslims and Christians about Jesus is that did Jesus say that he was God? Well, the belief in Christianity is that he in fact did say that. Jesus says things like before Abraham was, I am and that I and the Father are one and that if you see me, you've seen the Father. So those are all statements that you find in the Bible. Now the Muslim belief is that these statements still do not clearly have Jesus saying that he is God. So the debate still continues. All right guys, so let's jump in at number 10. This reason is God cannot change. In the book of Malachi, which is the last book in the Old Testament of the Bible, there is an explicit statement that is attributed to God. It says, I do not change. So Muslims believe that God is saying that I don't change in nature. As a result, God cannot be subjected to the same laws that he enacted. God cannot be subjected to time because, well, he created it and he does not pass through time, he does not age, he does not become tired, and he does not fall asleep. God does not follow the cycle of time. The reason at number nine, God cannot be born. He has always existed and he did not come into existence from non-existence. God wasn't created or born. He was always there and always will be there. You know, he was there well before the earth and anything was created and he'll be there well after. But Muslims say that, well, Jesus was born. He was nine months in his mother's womb, and as a result, his very nature is completely different, and it lacks the same qualities and characteristics that God possesses, since God cannot be born, and Jesus was born. Muslims say that God cannot have a beginning, but clearly Jesus had a beginning, so therefore he's not God. Now from there, we move on to reason number eight. Jesus never called himself God. God. There's a whole lot of debate around this, whether or not Jesus called himself God or whether it was directly or indirectly. But either way, Muslims say that there is no explicit verse available in any spiritual text where Jesus says that he is God. In the New Testament of the Bible, where words are specifically attributed to Jesus, nowhere does it say that Jesus said that he is God, clearly. Only when people like the Jews said, do you call yourself God, Jesus would say, things like, well, you say that I'm God. But if Jesus was God, he would clearly just say, yes, I'm God. I'm here to save you from your sins. Why would he play mind games and word games like this? Moving on to reason number seven, God cannot be seen. The Bible says that no man at any time has seen God. But Jesus was a man and he was seen. 
Even Jesus' statement in John 5 and 37 where he says, And the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice nor seen his face at any time. But hey, Jesus was standing right there amongst the people that he was speaking with. So if Jesus was God, then why did he say that no one has ever seen God because he himself could be seen, clearly? It also mentioned in the Quran when Moses asked God to show himself he said, look at the mountain, if it can bear my light, then you can see me. But the mountain crumbled into pieces, and then Moses apologized to God and said, okay, I don't want to see you. So Muslims look at that as a reason why Jesus couldn't be God, because God can't be seen, according to the Quran as well. Next reason is Jesus does nothing on his own. John 5 verse 30 says, As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who has sent me. Jesus said here that everything he did, all the miracles and everything, the judgments and whatnot he did, was all not on his own, but it was from God Almighty. Jesus did everything by the will of God. If Jesus was God, why could he not do whatever he wants? Because he would be God, right? Why does he listen to the Father to grant permission? In at number five, God is self-sufficient. Muslims point to Jesus eating, sleeping, and praying. God is self-sufficient though. He does not need anything to continue his existence. So he is not God if he requires something other than himself to exist. That would deprive him of his godhood since Jesus Christ was born, he ate, he slept, he prayed, and all of that. He would have died if he hadn't eaten or slept or drank any water. So with those qualities, how could he be God? Another reason from the Bible that Muslims say that Jesus is not God is that once there was a man that ran up to Jesus and fell on his knees before him. Then the man said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. And that's found in the book of Mark chapter 10 verses 17 to 18. So from this verse, the question arose, why did Jesus say God alone is good? If he was God, then he would have said that he's good. So this is evidence that, well, only God is perfect and no one else is, not even Jesus. Reason at number three, God is all knowing. Jesus claimed that God's knowledge was greater than his. When Jesus was asked about the hour, the day of judgment, he said that no one knows, not even the angels, not even he does, only his father knows the hour. But if Jesus was God, wouldn't he have known the answer? Also, God is all wise and doesn't need to learn anything. And the Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom. Psalms 147 verses five in the Bible says, great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. So the knowledge of God is infinite. And since Jesus didn't know everything, he couldn't be God. Moving on to number two, Jesus existed because of God. When Jesus ascended to God, he said to Mary Magdalene, I ascend unto my Father and to your Father, my God and your God. He didn't say, I'm going to ascend to myself, your God, and to me, or whatever, anything like that. And he, he didn't say that. So Muslims teach that this is very clear from this verse that Jesus is not God. He was just a messenger of God who came into the world to spread the message to worship God alone, just like Muslims believe that the Prophet Muhammad was a messenger of God, as well as other prophets before Jesus, like Abraham and Moses. And finally, we have number one, the essence of worship. God is the essence of worship in most religions anyways, and Jesus bowed down and worshiped God. God is the object of worship, or at least should be, according to the Christian teaching. So so if Jesus was God, then he would have told people to worship him. The Bible says that Jesus worshiped God, and I quote, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. That's taken from Luke 22, verses 44. So if Jesus is God, then who would he be praying to right there? Was he praying to himself? So guys, this concludes our episode. This was 10 of the biggest reasons that Muslims say that Jesus is not God.